appointment with him a few days ago, but he never seemed to show up. <laughs> Do you know when he'll return? Well, Mr. McGee was going to be doing some modeling for me. Medical reference for the work that I do here in the studio. It's a shame, really. The proposition would have been quite lucrative for him. Why, yes, that sounds delightful. Perhaps you could come down to my studio and we can sort out the details. I'm at the end of Main Street, small basement studio. The sign says Gimbal's Prosthetics. Just ring the buzzer and I'll let you in. Hello! Welcome to Gimbal's Prosthetics and Medical Supplies. You're here for the modelling job? Good, good. You seem to have rather well-developed limbs, if you don't mind me saying so. Oh, yes, forgive me. My name is Gimbal. Stanley Gimbal. But, oh, dear, let us dispense with formalities. You can call me Stan. Me? Oh, I'm just trying to make things a little easier for those who find themselves uh, disadvantaged. Giving a helping hand, you might say. A leg up. <laughs> Bloody clever, that one. Hmm? Oh, oh, you mean the arm. Yes, oh, oh, that's an interesting story, if you've got the time for one. Well, you might say I have a certain love affair with the human anatomy. An obsession, really. Prosthetics seemed a natural occupation in which to, uh, focus my enthusiasm, as it were. Well, I came to realize that I would never truly reach mastery in prosthetics without knowing what it was like to have to use one. And so I decided, quite out of the blue, actually, to cut off my own arm. My work, as you can well imagine, has quite improved since then. Aha! An eager participant! Very good. Just give me a few moments to get my equipment ready, and then come on in and we'll get started.
Huh? Oh, hey, help! You gotta get me out of here, man. This guy's a freaking nut job. Who, Gimbal? Yeah, Gimbal. That guy's been taking pieces off of me and McGee over here for the last three days. He's crazy, man. Freaking crazy. What are you? <laughs> Thanks, man. You're a lifesaver. I wasn't sure I was gonna make it. I'm telling you, I've been on some weird cases, but this one takes the cake. Yeah, yeah, that's me. How did you know? He did? Oh, man, that's solid. I owe that guy big. I hope I can figure out a way to get him back for this. What? Oh, no, man. No, no, no. Not for me anymore. Look at my hand. Gimbal took my trigger finger for a trophy. I'm all through with this business. I hate to leave Arthur in a lurch, but that's just the way it is. Thanks again. Don't worry, I'll take care of old Stumpy here. Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? What's shaking? What? Ain't coming back? What do you mean he ain't coming back? Man, that's a tough one. Bounty Hunter ain't no good without his trigger finger. Well, hell, that really leaves me in hot water, boy. Gonna cost old Arthur real good. You've got the first shot at dead tonight. I got this guy with a sheet a mile long, put in on three warrants. His girlfriend put up for the bond, and now he missed the court date. I can't get in touch with either of them. Want a job? Um, I'm working late shift here at the Yacht Club. Well, it won't be much of a job since you ain't licensed and all, but until I can get me another bounty hunter, I need you to find out if this guy skipped town or what. 
What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh... Yeah, no body attachment or nothing. Just find out if he's here or where he went. I'll pay you. Deal? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, here you are. Great, great, all right. The guy's name is Mike Durbin. Goes by the name Muddy. His girlfriend put up for his bond. She lives over there above Tripp's pawn shop. Her name is Marion Murrieta, but I haven't been able to get in touch with her. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Well, he was brought up on manslaughter charges years back, but he got acquitted. Since then, he's been in and out for this and that. Small-time stuff, mostly. Got our undivided attention. All right. As we all know, the Americans established a moon base back... Most recently, he was brought in as part of a big case on stolen auto parts. It's this big chop shop thing that's going on in Santa Monica. Been in the paper. That's right. Mary Ann Murrieta, in them crappy places above the pawn shop. Find out where the hell money is, where is he going, whatever. But be careful. You're not licensed, and if anything bad goes down, I don't know you. You hear me? All right. Come back when you got some info. Thanks in advance. Our top story tonight, a derelict ship found floating 10 miles off the Los Angeles coast earlier this morning was towed into the port of Los Angeles a few hours ago. The ship was spotted around midnight by fishermen who contacted the Coast Guard after their attempt to hail the ship proved futile. Coast Guard officials are releasing very little information right now, but have identified the vessel as the Elizabeth Dane. No word as of yet as to the whereabouts of the... Hey, Mayor, it's Mike. Look, I gotta head downtown for a few days, maybe longer. If Reno calls, tell him to meet me down there. We got something to discuss, apparently. I'll be at Milton's place in the Skyline Lofts 2A. Sorry, baby. I'll explain everything later. ...when the negative zero star emerged unscathed and apparently... unfazed by his high-speed accident. Rivers' agent released a statement stating that Rivers' crash was due to a mechanical problem. problem and that the studio is not pursuing legal action against Rivers for the trademark gate's destruction. Miraculously, this is the second crash Rivers...
Please, wait your turn and you'll be seen. Did you hear me? Take a seat. Lovely evening.
Thanks for coming back. What you need? Yeah, it's freaking me out, to be honest. I'm open all night in Santa Monica Police don't rank amongst the nation's most worthy. Oh, I don't know. I heard earlier someone at the pier got ripped up like that poor bastard in Long Beach the other day. I'll tell you, crazy stuff happens all the time, and it's like we just get used to it, you know, just going our way, do do do. But this, I don't know, these killings are chilling. So, did you need anything in particular, or? All right, here's what we got today. Thanks for coming back. Um, no. Well, okay. Hey, it's cool. I'm overstocked anyhow. Take a look and feel free to come back anytime. Need some company? Every second takes us closer to the time of judgment! Time of judgment gets closer every... Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've seen something comfortable. Hey there, Slick. If you're new to town or just new to So to what'd you find out about money? All right, then. I'll have to call in some bounty hunters to help me find Muddy and a couple of other jumpers. Thanks for all your help. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry about that. Here you are. See you around, then. If you ever find yourself or a loved one locked up, please call. Um, I'm working the late shift here at the uh, Yacht Club. How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Um, yes. Arrivederci, Vigo. Caller two, you're on the dub of night. Be gentle. I am. Hello, caller. I am. Is tonight a rerun? Yep. Caller number three, what's keeping you up tonight? Deb, listen to me, Deb. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report the stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Conspiracy? This goes beyond conspiracy, okay? There's no word for something as devious and secret as this, you understand? The people need to hear this. They need to know the real story. 
You've got our undivided attention. All right. As we all know, the Americans established a moon base back in the late 70s. That's no secret. What most people don't know is that they have been conducting a dig. Not for resources, but for artifacts. I see. Well, it's no coincidence that the Chinese have started conducting space missions. You know why? I'll tell you why. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from finding an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans, a.k.a. the Greys, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Fascinating. The American government's been putting more money into space. Don't you see what's happening? I can't believe I'm the only one that's figured it out. Am I the only person alive that can see what's going on? It's because the Andromedans and the Betas are going to be fighting their war in this galaxy through us, Deb. And the American people, the people of Earth, you people, cannot let this happen. It's Moogle versus Atlantis all over again. Thank you, Gomez. And that concludes the news portion of the show. Well, this girl's got to pay her bill, so it's time for a few commercials. But don't go anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up. Or should I say... Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken flavored products. Let's listen for which one they prefer. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Oh, oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, try this. Oh, oh this is some good f chicken! What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure! Um, oh, oh, seriously, drop these up your ass. Here. Try this one. Mmm. Hey. Mmm. Mother fucking great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy fuck. Fuck, that's good. What the fuck is this shit? Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good fucking chicken. I mean... Friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken, you'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie, and the talking pig, and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally mute object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Man, I happen to have a glandular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! <laughs> She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. <laughs> Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She wasn't like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm going to have to make a deposit. <laughs> Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 in the BMC. Say goodbye. Hey, <laughs> hey, 